what would you tell someone like at what can i do what should i do okay i think i think we've overheard about people saying do you have a business idea and stuff like that and many people have good business ideas but they're not working which means that formula is not properly working in a pragmatic way yeah so the issue is about not you having an idea but it's you becoming the idea that everyone will be interested in knowing you develop yourself until you become so valuable that when people look at you they are willing to invest their money they are willing to invest their confidence they are willing to invest their trust into you as an idea the whole you it's not about you becoming an enterprise or a business person but it's about you becoming a business on your on your own the same end of the show so make sure you have all the details joining us live in the studio is uh, Sheki Timburwa he is a serial entrepreneur, an investor, a dynamic leader, a versatile speaker. He is an energy and tech maverick. Glad to have you on the show, Sheki. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vikendi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's really an honor for me to be, to be in Sky FM Studio with you. It's um, an absolute honor to also have you here. So, uh, where do we even start uh, 2021? One of uh, Forbes Africa 30 under 30, 2020, one of the top 40 Zimbabwe most influential leaders of 2020, uh, Young Corporate Directors Network of the Institute of Corporate Directors in Zimbabwe. 2019, one of the most influential young leaders in Africa, Pan African Youth Leadership. <laughs> Not 10 to 30 yet, you're turning 30 on. The 9th of May this year. Yeah, definitely. And you've accomplished so much. Where does this journey begin? Oh, thank you so much, Vikendi. I think I think uh, what what started my journey was the fact that I I came to realize that uh, there are things that I'm supposed to do that are purposeful with my life at a very young age. Because I I the way I was brought up, I was pushed to become responsible at a very young age. Uh, I was raised with a single mother, and she was a, she's a, she's still a teacher. So you know that time when teachers would be coming to work and then they have to go to my very district at the events whereby they go to teach. So she would leave on Monday morning and then she'd come back on Friday evening. Not change, I would see her alone in home. So that made me to be responsible for very young age. That's why you see the journey. It's more like a life of a person who has lived 50 Wait, years but is depressed. Because you know, um, when I saw you on the list of Forbes 30 and the thing, I was like, no way. Because I've spoken to you before. And I get your age around maybe 35, but you have been doing a business for the past 10 years. Definitely. And um, why did you decide to be inclined or to be drawn to energy, to mining and the different business interests you are doing? You know what, what drives me to do that is that I'm a person who's interested in exploring value. Anything that is valuable, I really need to explore it. I really need to mine it out. So that's what pushed me to become a person who's into energy and also into mining sector and construction. So the issue is I realize that there are problems that humans are facing in, 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 in their daily lives. Like, for example, the time I started my energy company, there was a lot of load shedding. The poverty energy in Africa was highly increasing, especially here in Zimbabwe. That's the time we had 18 hours of load shedding. So I was trying to deal with this problem that humanity was facing at that particular time and come up with a solution. And then before I knew it, it was a business because I was dealing with a problem that people were facing on a daily basis. So if you offer a solution to people who are having problems, definitely they'll give you money for the services or the product that you're offering in the market. So would you advise that for someone who's actually sitting and uh, struggling to come up with an idea that will bring money to them, where do you even start with that conversation? Because you could be interested in doing something. Could I want to, I want to have other streams of income, but then you have no idea where to start, what works. What would you tell someone like Atogara Rukufungot? What can I do? What should I do? Okay, I think I think we've overheard about people saying, do you have a business idea and stuff like that? And many people have good business ideas, but they're not working, which means that formula is not properly working in a pragmatic way. Yeah. So the issue is about not you having an idea, but it's you becoming the idea that everyone will be interested in knowing. You develop yourself until you become so valuable that when people look at you, they are willing to invest their money, they are willing to invest their confidence, they are willing to invest their trust into you as an idea. The whole you, it's not about you becoming an enterprise or a business person but it's about you becoming a business on your on your own to say miss v candy she's no longer just miss v candy she's now a business you are run like a business generating exactly. income you generate value for yourself and value. then that value is what attracts money towards you 
So it's like when you see a person going to a bank and they want uh, to be given a loan or whatsoever, there's someone who can walk into a bank and they want a collateral from the bank, right? And there's someone who walks into the same bank, they want 100000 or a million dollars and someone wants 5000 The bank cannot release its funds to that person. And someone goes into the bank, they have developed a name until it becomes a brand. And that brand will be given a million dollars before even they sign papers. So it's all about you creating value for yourself. You extract your value, you extract your potential, and then you purify it. You pay yourself until you become the purest form of your value. And then you offer that value to the market. And people are willing to buy anything that is valuable. People are willing to buy. If you see a person who's got a, a, like a necklace that is bronze, and then there's a person who's got a necklace that is a 12 karat gold and a 24 karat gold, obviously the 24 karat will be more expensive. And people who buy the 24 karat are people who know value. Okay, I think we, we'll, we need another whole day for this um, conversation, extracting value, value addition to you as an individual, how you go about that, because I think it's important. Um, someone may actually be clueless. Could you, how do you then start from zero? Because understanding your story, you started your business mm -hmm. with just $533. True. And uh, your mom gave you the first amount, which was $100. How then did you multiply it to become something? You see, you see what happened with that one is that's, that's the concept that I'm talking about to say the moment you don't have value within yourself, mm -hmm. you are going to depreciate everything that is around you. If you're given a million bucks, if you're given a million dollars and you've got a mentality of a 10,000 figure in your hand, in your head, you manage that million dollars like 10,000. So it's all about having $500 and then you've got a mentality of a millionaire, you've got a mentality of creating millions out of $500. That's the mentality that can make you save the, uh, multiply and save that $500 until it becomes a substantial figure that people can talk about. So it, I knew that I had the money and this money someone could have bought a phone. Of course. Right. But I, I deliberately knew that this money, if I don't multiply this money, my life is hinged upon this money my life revolves upon this money so i have to multiply this money as fast as possible so i was doing everything to save up the money and i was not living a life to try to impress anyone because the moment you start trying you start living a life of trying to impress anyone you go broke very quick and very fast and that's what's wasting our generation's potential people are living for social media people are living for instagram people are living for the gram but they don't the life that they portray on social media is not really what they're going through in their lives and it's a pity because that's what is eating our potential as young people, especially in our African narrative. African narrative. And um, I remember having a conversation with you about um, how our forefathers, who were like within this age group that we are in, sure. 1830 and stuff, were actually fighting for the emancipation of wow. the nation, sure. of the economy. And in comparison to what's happening now, a huge percentage of people are actually flexing and what emancipation are they doing how much of a limitation is that moving forward and uh in controlling also the african narrative and the zimbabwe narrative how involved should young people be you see you see, you see that's an interesting question right there right you see i think the way generations are structured it's supposed to be like there is a generation that lived across the whole continent of africa that's your kwame nkuruma the rg mugabe uh, the Muma Gaddafi, you talk about Thomas Sankara, the Patrice Lumumba. That was a generation that was specifically targeting on the independence of the whole bloc. They were targeting on the emancipation of Africa. So these people were, uh, were their minds were programmed to become militant people because they were rejecting the power of the colonial or the people that were capturing the continent. So people like that, very difficult for them to then win the liberation and then become productive to make the land that they've emancipated to become a productive land. So there should be a sequence to say, okay, there was a generation of our forefathers. They fought for the liberation of the country. They fought for the liberation of Africa. But they are supposed to give back to another generation that is not going to be fighting for liberation, but that is going to exploit the potential of the land that they fought for. That's what's leaking in Africa. So you see, they, they, that's what's creating also a leadership generational gap between those that fought and those that are in power, whether in Burkina Faso, whether way, whether way you see it. They look at the generation now that we have. They don't see, they don't have the confidence that these people, they can lead. You know why? It's because we are proving them wrong, right? What excites people right now, like you're saying, they are people, if you check at the people that emancipated Africa or even emancipated Zimbabwe independent-wise, 
they were between the age of 16 years to 30 years. Those are the people who went to fight. Those are the people that went to liberate this country. But let's look at our age from our 16 or our 18 years to 30 years. What are we doing right now? We are busy on life. We are busy smoking. We are popping champagne. We are washing our watches with champagne. And we are flexing. We are competing against each other. We don't complement each other. We are so divided in our approach in doing anything. So you can imagine we are that kind of a gene that is broken. Whereby we instead of me complimenting Miss V Candy, I'm trying to compete with her. Whatever that she does, I don't celebrate it because Misplaced I'm not priorities. Exactly. So mm. that's what's costing us as a people. That's what's even making us have people in Africa that I can give you a very good example of uh, of what's happening in Burkina Faso. Every Francophone country, those that were colonials colonized by France. They are so there is so much um, coups that are happening. Like we are not talking about Burkina Faso. There is a coup that happened. We talk about Guinea. There was a coup that happened. We talk about money. There was a coup that there's, there, there was a coup that happened. There is one thing that you have to realize. There, we are coming to realizing that the people who captured us, they captured us and they introduced a new system of production in our continent as Africa. We never used to know about agriculture at a large scale. We used to know whereby we didn't know a plan, we didn't know anything. So these guys, when they captured, they had the proper strategy. What was the strategy? They knew these guys, let's change the dynamics of engagement of their country. So even if they are to liberate themselves from our yoke as the captures, they will never be able to understand the paradigm shift that would have happened by the time they will liberate themselves. So we don't even know where to buy, buy the tractors. Everything that was now being done, like agriculture, my boom spray, my blunders and everything, it was new to the African person. So we emancipated ourselves politically. We occupied the most powerful position, the prime ministers, the generals, the attorneys and stuff like that. But we never dared to look at who was responsible in the stability of the economy, who was feeding the masses, who was producing the biggest gold productions that are happening in Africa. So that time when, when people relinquished the power, we didn't have enough people that were ready to occupy the same shoes of the people that were doing agriculture. I can give you a very good example of our own country, Zimbabwe. Remember, we signed the Languist, uh, the Languist Agreement. It was almost like a 25-year agreement that was supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. That 25 years after the independence, what we were supposed to do as a people or as a nation was to have people who can go to the farms that were being cultivated by white people. And then we have the vice farm manager being a black person like us. The 25-year period was a period for the person to learn how to be a pragmatic farm manager at the level of the whites. But what we did is that we enjoyed the 25 years celebrating independence, celebrating the infrastructure that was put by the previous governments. And our people were not getting properly educated to know how to run the economy. When 25 years lapsed, whereby the people they were not supposed to give us back our land and stuff like that, we were not ready to occupy the land. Even the Bible talks about when you are going to Canaan, I will not go, I'm not going to push the, 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 the people that were occupying the Canaanites at once. Yeah, I will sure. drive them slow by slow, lest the land or the beast of the field multiply against you. It's Strategy. a concept. It, yeah. It's a concept. <laughs> if yeah. you go and you've got a capacity of farming 10 hectares and you're occupying 100 hectares, you limit the production of a 100 hectare farm to 10 hectares. Because you're it's a overwhelmed. Problem. You're overwhelmed. You don't know what to do. So that's the that's the gist. What's of what what's the solution? In short, we're running out of time. Sure. Um, what is the solution? What would you say we should do, and um, you know, start implementing conversations that we should start having? I think what we are supposed to do is that we have to change our mindset to become people who are productive. You know, there's nothing that deals with poverty like being productive. Our African people, our Zimbabwean people, we are mainly or generally consumers. We are not producers. We are focused on consuming what has been produced by other people. And in the economic, in the economics or in the, like, uh, in the ecosystem of finance, as long as you are a producer, you are going to be controlled by those that feed you. He who feeds you controls you. So our goal is to change and change the equation from being people who are being supplied we are involved in the value chain addition. We are involved in the productivity of the country. If you talk about the use Short term, how feasible is that? It's very feasible. Okay. It starts with the mindset. It starts with the mindset. True. Shaki, thank you so, so much for your time. And uh, you're also named, as I said, um, Forbes 30 under 30 class of 2021. Um, someone who survived and thrived during one of the most turbulent chapters on the earth, um, the global pandemic. How are you able to do that? Uh, I think one thing that happened with the, with, the, with the pandemic is that it was a challenge to a lot of people, but I don't believe in wasting a good crisis. 
wasting a good crisis. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> crisis because it made us to understand that you can depend upon artificial intelligence. These are uh, Zoom calls and everything. It actually helped me to create more time that I'm free and available to do more work. Wonderful. Thank you so, so much for your time. I think we need to bring you back again um, as you were mentioning pragmatic you know uh, ways to sustain and also to build our brands ourselves our economy different things and i think we need to bring you back in the studio again thank you so so much, you so much. Uh, shaky timburwa for your time there you have it our galaxy celebs sounding good all the time right here on the star fm brought to us by tea and real food on wheels a service that delivers food